Welcome to Resource Review from here at the Science Museum in London. This is the ultimate guide to teaching resources available in the market today. What we do is test resources in the classroom. Now, these resources are written for a specific subject and a particular key stage. Today, what we're looking at is primary numeracy at key stage one. This week, we use the resources at St. Patrick's Primary School, where Lisa Small is working with key stage one students. To add to this gruelling assessment, we have our own panel of experts, and that consists today of Adrian Jones, a freelance education consultant, Ray Barker from the British Educational Suppliers Association, Adrian Fenton, Curriculum Support Manager for the Association of Science Education, and Kay Scoresby, a freelance education consultant. In today's programme, we test the following resources. To calculate CD-ROM from Too Simple Software, on the mat from Beam Education and Perfect Times written by Wendy Fortescue Hubbard. Now, will any of these resources be good enough to get the resource review recommendation? Let's find out later on the programme. Now, in order to help you make up your mind about whether you give the recommendation, what will you decide is a good resource? Um, I'd be looking for easy access for the teacher so that when they look at a resource they think this will enhance my teaching because it needs to be something more creative and then more importantly in the classroom that the children are motivated to use this that they want to use it it fires their imagination okay thank you let's see how Lisa Small got on with these resources at St Patrick's Primary School to calculate CD-ROM from Too Simple Software is suitable for teaching Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2 numeracy. It includes spreadsheet and graphing tools, as well as 500 pieces of clip art. I'm going to tell you what our learning objective is going to be today. We are going to learn how to partition two digit numbers. The two calculator is actually an enormous calculator and you can use it to um, as a normal calculator but it also will create graphs for you and pictograms and um, you can in, um, download resources from the internet through it as well. We could use it to do our working out and then use it as a, a checking tool to see whether we've got the right answer or not which they quite quite like. It's nice to see they've got something right. Five, lots of ten, brilliant. Add four. Shall we check if you're right? You ready? Equals, Equals. 54, fantastic, well done, you were right, super. The children can actually come and use it themselves, which is always a, always a plus. It's nice to use them as the teacher. Once they're in that role, they can take control of their own learning more. So I think the only disadvantage of the, of the programme is that it, it does take time to get used to using it. You've got to have a, a lot, enough time to play about it and find out its features. I definitely recommend it. It's very interactive, very bright, um, and it helps you challenge the children a little bit as well. Okay, Kay, that was to calculate. What, what are your impressions? Well, it seemed to be quite easy, and, and the teacher talked about that as well. Um, I mean, she managed to move it, the things around. I don't know that it added a lot more dimension than you would add to, to using a normal whiteboard, which I would reserve, you know, opinion, because I don't think we've seen the full potential of that particular piece of software. Thanks for that. Um, Adrian, in your experience, um, something like this, how effective is it to help students understand what's being taught to them at this key stage? What it does, I mean anything that simplifies the learning of maths and actually engages kids like that does is going to be good. The fact that it's based on a simple spreadsheet without the complexities of a, a normal spreadsheet is good and that not only are children getting mathematical understanding from it, but they're also beginning to appreciate ICT skills. Okay. Let's go back to Lisa's class and see her working with a resource called On The Mat. On The Mat is a stand-up flipbook from Beam Education. It offers 36 activities which are designed for use as lesson starters and can consolidate and supplement your main teaching. One of the resources I used um, during my lesson today was on the map, it's actually produced by Beam. The resource is ideal for using in your mental and oral starter. Um, basically it's a bank of activities, they're all very physical, the children really enjoy them, it's a lot of get up and go, so they're you know, really absorbing the objective. Um, the book gives you 
a series of, of activities, there's there's no build up. You have to pick and choose yourself which, which ones you want to use. Towards the back though, to help you with that, there is um, a table which will show you which objectives you need to be covering and which activities will cover that particular objective. Um, it will probably help you through from year one up to year three. There's a real range of, of ability within there. And it's going to be a game and you need to use your knowledge of your ten times table and your five times table, Daniel. Each activity is very clearly described. Um, tells you which object, what, any objects you'll need to play the games, um, gives you ideas for extension, and will also tell you which areas of maths it's covering. The one I chose today was called um, Stand Up. Um, the children are asked to find a value for their name, um, 10 points for a vowel or 5 points for a consonant, and then add them up, and then we see if we can find who has the most valuable name. When you've got your name, add up how many points you've got, and then write the total in a circle so we can see how many... You're, you're cheating using your surname as well. <laughs> Michelle's making her name longer by using two names. Right, can you add all those points together and tell me how you get all together? I was really quite impressed with the, the resource. Definitely we'll use it again. Um, like I say, it's very lively, and anything that can grab the children's attention um, is always a positive thing. OK, Kate, what do you think of that resource then? I think the key thing to that one was that the, the teacher said that the children found it fun and that it enabled them to think of different strategies to get to the same answers. And, and I think that's really good. Um, it's also uh, a reasonably cheap resource that can be used time and time again. Um, and it could be used in small groups as well as with the whole class. And I suppose that the difference is that this is, is not technology, so it's something that the teacher will be, maybe be more confident about. OK, thank you. Um, Ray, is that how you would see this, act, this particular resource being used? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very much a staff room resource, I think, isn't it? The school would buy one, it's full of bright ideas, teachers always needed bright ideas. I think the idea of starters, which particularly teachers find difficult in terms of something that really gets kids going before they move into the rest of a, liter a literacy lesson, um, you know, it sounds like something that, that all teachers could make good use in because they can dip into, they can use it. It won't be used all the time, but it's there, it's a good resource. Mm -hmm, okay. And Adrian seems to be a fairly unanimous um, support at the moment. Do you differ in your opinion uh, on no, that? No, no, I would agree entirely. I mean, I would say that as long as people have something that they can dip into in the classroom, particularly in primary, there's always the time pressures. It's quite often that kind of hook that will make the difference between a resource that's actually used and one that just stays on the shelf and, mm. and doesn't then get actually used. OK, so a fairly consistent bunch of opinions there. But let's have a look at another resource now, Perfect Times. Perfect Times by Cambridge Hitachi is a CD-ROM which contains a number of activities and games to suit all ages and abilities. It reinforces basic multiplication and division skills. Can you spot, what can you spot, what's the same about all those numbers? But there's sometimes zero at, at the end. Perfect Times is um, more of a programme the children can use for themselves, it's not necessarily a teaching tool. Um, it's something they can use to follow up after your teaching activity. Um, it lets them time themselves and test themselves, which again is, is good for their motivation. Um, I just used it today for, simply for the 10 times table, but it gives you different options for different times tables, and you can also do division on there as well. But um, not a teaching tool, but definitely useful for the children to challenge themselves. Look carefully at the numbers that I click and tell me what's the same about all the numbers that I'm clicking. And when the card starts to turn, you click on top of the ones that are in the 10 times table. That's it, good lad, well done. If I'm honest, the way budgets are, it's not something I would, I would prioritise by. Oh. What were your thoughts, Kay? The fact that the children can go away and do something independently, can look at something, can learn for themselves, and, and can interact with each other, I think is really, really good. The teaching that's involved is actually the teacher checking up on the child's learning and on the progress they're making, which is maybe where they need to step back a bit more than actually projecting. And for some teachers, that's a bit difficult. But any activity that involves independent learning for the child, I think, is a good thing. Right, Ray, let me, let me come to you on this. Um, 
Is this a, a constant struggle then for teachers, this idea of cost and, you know, would, do you recommend it, how useful will it be? Something all teachers will it's have to do. It's a massively with, difficult it? problem for all schools, really, when they have restricted budgets. But um, a part of the work that BISA does is to look at um, how schools fit their resources into their school development plan. All resources should come from what the school needs to do for their kids. And that resource actually showed that to a certain extent because um, it was about personalised learning. It was about kids working by themselves. And you need resources for kids working by themselves. You need resources, different kinds of resources, for teachers to teach. You need different kinds of resources for kids to sit around and, and do more practical things. I mean, there are lots of different learning styles and resources. There is not one resource let's say, but does everything. So mm -hmm. teachers need to buy lots of different things, but they have to make the choice according to, one, how much money they've got, which is always a challenge, but two, what their individual school aims to do, and three, their individual kids, and they know their learning resources. And teachers are actually best people to do that. Thank you. So let's see if our expert panel can help us with a few more insights into alternative resources available for primary numeracy. Okay. Um, some of the, the resources that are out there like the ones that there are here in the Science Museum to do with the little computers they're called Romas or Pixies so that with young children because we are talking about children aged five to seven so that they can hands-on and they have a little bit of power because they get to direct these little models to go forward and there's such massive maths language that comes out of that as well as all the concepts of measuring directions angles those sorts of things okay Adrian there's, al there's also material that is recommended by the Maths Association, so teachers can actually find reviews of different resources. Um, there's an organisation called TEAM, which is Teachers Evaluating Educational Multimedia Materials. So teachers can also find more information about resources there, so I'd recommend all of those things. Okay, thanks very much indeed. Right, so there you have it. Let's just have a quick recap. The resources we looked at today were to calculate, Perfect times and on the mat. Okay, which, of, if any of these resources, do you think will be worthy of a, a resource review recommendation? I think they're all very good resources in their own right. They all have a purpose that they're there for. The on the mat was a, is a very good um, teacher resource. The perfect times is really good for children to learn on their own, and the to calculate it. Is, is, a, is an overall tool. So I think that I'd recommend them all, and I um, sort of hedge in my bets, I'd most likely go for the to calculate having the most potential. The most potential, thank you Kay. So our resource review panel recommendation this week, to calculate at Key Stage 1. Right, there's more information on all the resources that you've seen today available on our website, and that's at teachers.tv forward slash resource review. And if you want to get in contact with us, you can email us, and that's resource review at teachers.tv. Thank you, everyone, for taking part. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>